In this video, I'm going to be talking about phosphorus and primarily phosphorus additives. I'm going to talk about what they are, why they should be avoided, and most importantly, how to avoid them. Now, the information in this video is geared towards people with kidney disease. However, there is more and more research that supports everyone in the population limiting their intake of additives, so the information in this video can benefit anyone. So let's get right down to it. If you've done any research on the CKD diet, you might have come across information saying that you need to restrict your phosphorus intake. And that's not entirely accurate. A more accurate statement is that you need to be restricting your intake of phosphorus additives. What is a phosphorus additive? Well, a phosphorus additive is any substance added to food that contains phosphorus. Generally, they're added to food for a specific purpose. Here's an ingredient list for Coca-Cola, and right here you can see that it contains phosphoric acid. This substance was added to the drink to prevent the brown coloring of the drink from turning completely black. Here's another ingredient list. This one is American cheese. It contains calcium phosphate, and this is used as an emulsifier to keep the cheese from breaking apart when it melts, and also serves as an added source of calcium in the food. And now you're thinking, great, Lauren, so my food has phosphorus additives. Why does this matter? Well, if you have chronic kidney disease, your kidneys become less efficient at filtering out phosphorus, and it can be difficult to figure out whether you're consuming too much phosphorus. You can be consuming too much phosphorus and your phosphorus lab results can look completely normal, but your body is doing a whole bunch of things to compensate for your decreased kidney function to keep those phosphorus levels normal. And even though you may not see this in your labs, these corners that your body are cutting can cause long-term problems with your parathyroid gland, bone health, and cardiovascular health. We are starting to see that phosphorus levels in people with CKD only start to become elevated on your lab results when the body runs out of ways to compensate for that excess phosphorus. And I don't want you to get to that point, so I advise all patients with CKD, regardless of stage, to limit or completely avoid their intake of phosphorus additives. It's really hard to eat too much phosphorus from natural foods, but additives can add up quickly. Now, you might be tempted to search the internet for high phosphorus foods and avoid those foods. The lists you come across are typically gonna have things like nuts, seeds, beans, legumes. These are not your problem. And anyone who's telling you to avoid these foods as your primary strategy for lowering your phosphorus intake hasn't been keeping up with the research. And you might be saying, but Lauren, I've looked these foods up. They do contain a lot of phosphorus. And technically you're right but the phosphorus found naturally in foods has low bioavailability. There has been a ton of research over the past few years, and we're finding that when people get their phosphorus from natural sources, i.e. not additives, their body doesn't actually absorb all the phosphorus. Some of the phosphorus is not available to your body because it's bound up by phytates and protein. Your body simply cannot digest it, so it never actually goes into your bloodstream. A good metaphor for bioavailability is a bank, specifically your bank. So here's your bank, and I'm betting your bank has a lot of money inside of it. But I would venture to guess that only a small portion of this money belongs to you, and that the bank is only going to allow you to access your money. The availability of money to you is low compared to how much money is actually in the bank. And when it comes to banking, you probably don't care all that much about how much money your bank has in it in total. You probably just care about how much of that money belongs to you. In the context of food, a food can have a lot of phosphorus in it, but only a portion of that phosphorus is actually absorbed into your bloodstream. The phosphorus isn't available to be absorbed because it's locked up by compounds in the food, such as phytate or protein. Similar to banking and your money, you shouldn't focus on the total amount of phosphorus that a food has, but the amount that actually gets absorbed. Now, let me show you how these foods with a high amount of natural phosphorus compare to a food with additives. Let's compare peanuts with American cheese. One ounce of peanuts contains 125 milligrams of phosphorus, which is all naturally occurring phosphorus while an ounce of American cheese contains only 100 milligrams of phosphorus. 
which is mostly in the form of phosphorus additives. Just looking at this, you can see that the peanuts contain more phosphorus. But let's see what happens when we actually eat these foods. Well, as you can see, only a small portion of the phosphorus in the peanuts was absorbed into the bloodstream, while almost all of the phosphorus from the American cheese was absorbed. This is because additives have a very high bioavailability. Your body is very good at absorbing phosphorus additives. Now that you see how much phosphorus is absorbed from the foods, which of these foods is the true high phosphorus food? That's right. The food with the additives is the high phosphorus food. So please, please, please do not search the internet for lists of high phosphorus foods. These lists are old, outdated, and full of misinformation. Any food with a phosphorus additive in it should be considered a high phosphorus food. And unfortunately, there are so many foods with additives that you wouldn't be able to put them all on one list. So now that we are hopefully on the same page and agree that high phosphorus foods are foods with a phosphorus additive, how can you tell if a food has one in it? Well, currently the only way to tell is to read the ingredient list. Phosphorus is not required to be listed on the nutrition facts panel so you will rarely see it listed there. And even if you do see it listed, there's no way to determine if the phosphorus is natural or from an additive. But manufacturers are required to list additives in their ingredient list. Let's look at a few examples. Let's compare two different colas. On the left, we have Coke Zero, and on the right, you see we have Zevia Cola. I've highlighted in the Coke Zero where the phosphorus additive is. I mentioned before that phosphorus is added to colas to preserve the caramel brown color and keep it from turning black. You can see that the Zevia Cola doesn't have caramel color added to it, so there was no need to add phosphorus in it. In my experience, foods that are labeled as organic or natural tend to be less likely to contain phosphorus additives. There are plenty of non-organic foods that don't have additives, but if you're comparing labels and getting frustrated that you can't find something without phosphorus, I would recommend finding the natural or organic version of the food. Also, you'll notice that I only highlighted the PHOS in this example. That's because there are a ton of different types of phosphorus additives, too many to memorize. What I'm showing you now is a list of all the different additives. It's overwhelming. But the good news is they all have the letters PHOS. So that's all you really need to train your eyes to look for. Let's look at a yogurt example. I'm going to compare Yoplait strawberry flavored yogurt to Walmart's great value strawberry yogurt. The Yoplait strawberry on the left here contains phosphate, while the great value strawberry does not contain phosphorus. Interestingly enough, in both of our examples so far, it's the less expensive product that has turned out to be better for us. It's a win-win. Also, don't assume that if you find a product from a certain manufacturer that all of their products will be the same. Yoplait actually has some product lines that contain no additives, and similarly, some Walmart branded products will have additives while some will not. It varies by product, so always check the label. One question that comes up periodically is whether you can assume that a food with multiple additives has more phosphorus than a food with only one additive. And I'm actually showing the ingredient lists for two different protein bars here. Can you pick the product with one additive and assume it is the safer choice? And the answer to that is no. And while that may seem counterintuitive, let's look at another money example to illustrate why you can't assume that. Let's assume I offered to give you one of these bills or two of these bills. Would you take two bills because two is more than one? Probably not. This single bill is worth more money. Similarly, the total number of additives on the label does not mean that one food has more phosphorus than the other. The product with one additive could have more phosphorus in it. You can't know for sure. So once you've spotted one phosphorus additive, there's no need to keep looking through the list to see if there are more. My best advice is to read all food labels and compare products to find the one with zero phosphorus additives. Now, the last bit of advice I'll give you about finding the phosphorus on food labels is what to do if you can't read the fine print on a food label. Even with my glasses on, I can't always read that tiny print that the ingredient lists are written in sometimes. 
When that happens, I take out my phone and use the camera feature to zoom in on the ingredient list. It's amazing how much easier it is to read. If you don't have a phone with a camera like that, then you can order some credit card sized magnifiers off of Amazon. These fit easily into your wallet and make it much easier to read the fine print when you're on the go. Some of them even have a light built in. So to recap, almost all people with kidney disease, as well as the general population, should be limiting or completely avoiding foods that contain phosphorus additives. This will help you protect your cardiovascular system and avoid the painful side effects of a high phosphorus diet. Foods that contain no additives may still have a lot of phosphorus in them, but it's not well absorbed by your body, and many of these foods are actually good for your kidneys. In the next videos, we'll dive deeper into some of these high phosphorus foods that we now know are not actually high in phosphorus to tell you more about the benefits of eating more of these foods. This video is part of our online CQD nutrition course. If you want to view the rest of the videos, I've included a link to our course in the description of this video. And as always, if you like videos like this and you want me to make more, let me know by liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks.